الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى and send peace and blessings upon his noble and most beloved and final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of our own actions and from the evil that exists in this world. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst the people who follow and fulfill the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day the Sahaba were sitting with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in the famous hadith narrated by Umar and one of the first hadith that are that we learn when we open up the books of hadith that a man came and it was Jibreel alayhi salam and he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam four questions about Islam, what is Islam? And he gave him answers. And what is Iman? And he told him what Iman was and what is Ihsan? What is the perfection of that faith? And then he said, what are the signs of the end of times? So there were four questions, four areas that make up our deen and later the Prophet ﷺ told Umar, he asked him, he said, do you know who this was? He said, Allah wa Rasulullah, Allah and his messenger know better. He said, this was Jibreel, he came to teach you your deen. So we know from this very foundational hadith that our deen is made up from these four areas. Understanding what our faith is, Iman, and what the practice of our faith is, Islam, and what is the perfection of our faith, Ihsan, and then also understanding the context of the times that we live in. Understanding what, where we are in the world and where we are in time. So when we look around our current events, we can't just focus on ibadah, on our worship, and forget that we live within the context of a world, of a nation, of communities, and we work towards addressing those things. And during this week and the, the last week and during these weeks of voting, many Muslims exercised their right to vote and chose to speak up. Some did choose, chose not to. Whatever choice was made, many of us were thinking about the state of the nation, the state of the world, and how we as individuals, what can we do to make, affect a change, to affect positive change, to make some positive change. And in reflecting on this, I remember the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, another very famous hadith, but sometimes we don't understand exactly what he was talking about. Why? Because one of the things that the Prophet ﷺ was given, and it's, it's one of his miracles that Allah only gave him. They're called Jawami' al-Kalim, comprehensive speech. In other words, and he told the Sahaba this, he said, I was given preference over the, all of the Prophets, all of the other Prophets, 124 times. 25,000 according to the various hadith narrations. There were things that only he was given. No one else was given. So that Allah could show not only all of humanity, but all of the prophets, this is my chosen one. This is the most noble of amongst you. You, O prophets, are the most noble amongst Bani Adam, the children of Adam. But you, O Muhammad, are the most noble and cherished and beloved to me amongst all of the prophets. These are the khasais. And during this month of Rabi' al-Awwal, that's something that the Muslims traditionally have focused on studying. What Studying his seerah, his biography, his sunnah, and what he did, and what he said, and what he commanded, and what he prohibited. His shama'il, how he looked, how he acted, how he spoke. And his khasais, the things that were very specific to him. So these are the things that we should work towards becoming more and more familiar with. What are his descriptions? And what are the things that only he was given? He was given later to Isra. No other prophet was allowed, no other creation. Even Jibreel said, you, uh, you have to go by yourself. No one else was given this. One of the things that he was given is Jawami uh, al-Kalim. Very comprehensive speech. So when we read something or when we hear a hadith, and it might just be a few words, but we have to realize that these words have a magnitude of meaning deep meaning. So in one famous hadith he said, 
الدين النصيحة. And what does this mean? What does الدين النصيحة mean? Sometimes we trans it's translated as religion is giving good advice. Nasiha. Commonly, now Arabs will say nasiha means advice. But it has a much deeper meaning. And the Sahaba wanted to grasp some of this that meaning. They said, Ya Rasul, to, to who? Liman Ya Rasulullah. Who? Who do we give this nasiha? This advice? He said, Lillahi wa li kitabihi wa li rasulihi wa li a'immati muslimin wa ammatihi. To Allah and his book, and his messenger, and to the leaders of the Muslims, and to the general population of the Muslims. So we shouldn't translate it exactly as nasiha, or advice, because this word nasiha has a, an ocean of meanings. So much so, just to show you this one hadith, a deen un nasiha. Religion is, our deen is nasiha. There's a book by Sidi Ahmed Zarro, a complete book just on this one hadith to explain this hadith. What does it mean? And on that book, Ibn Zukri wrote almost a 1,000 page commentary on that one hadith. It's actually scratching the surface. So imagine that. This one hadith, that a book is written on it and a commentary to expand on it. That's the Depth in the magnitude of the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So let's not take it lightly when we look at a collection, even something seem, as seemingly simple as, uh, as, seem, as seemingly simple as the, the 40 hadith of Imam Nawawi. He collected those hadith to show 40 hadith that explain all of Islam, the entirety of religion. And so in this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reminding us, he's saying, have nasiha which its definition is being sincere and being just and being fair and doing what's good for that person. If you do something good for a person, even if that person is rude to you or mean to you or took your right, but you have a chance to give that person their right and treat them fairly and treat them justly, one of the descriptions that can be said about that is nasahtuhu. You have given him nasiha. You have been sincere in your interaction with that person for the sake of That's the deen. That's what our religion is about. And so when the Messenger of Allah says that Nasiha is to be done with Allah, with his book, and with his messenger, and with the leaders of the Muslims and also with the general public of the Muslims. So one of the things when we exercise our right to remind people or right to vote for our leaders and try to guide them and give feedback and, and give our opinions. We're exercising our right and fulfilling our duty as Muslims to do nasiha for the leaders. But the hadith goes on to say وَعَمَّتِهِمْ and the general Muslims. And that's where I remind myself, I begin by reminding myself and others that if we are to fulfill our duty as Muslims of nasiha, that it's not just to the general public, it's not just to the leaders, we exercise that at the time, but now that that's done, now we focus on the other aspects of, of giving nasiha, where the Rasul والسلام, the Messenger of Allah said, Allah, to Allah, to his book, are we really fulfilling the rights of being just with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we fulfilling his, his, his obligations that he has put upon us? Are we fulfilling the, the rights of the Qur'an upon us? Are we reading it? Are we reflecting on it? Are we implementing it? Are we fulfilling the rights of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Especially during this month of Rabi Al-Qul, when we, are, we know that he was, he was born in this month, he passed away in this month, and he made his hijrah in this month. Are we taking time to reflect on who he was and what he means to us? And in whatever way, in whatever capacity, are we following him? And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the tawfiq, for the success, to be able to follow him and to follow his sunnah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala. We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send peace and blessings upon the noble 
and final messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And I enjoin you and I enjoin myself to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to make sure that we have, remind myself, I remind myself and remind you to remember about our priorities. This hadith in the Quran to Allah has told us about Nasih, he said to Allah and to his book and to his messenger and to the leaders and to the general, public of the Muslims. Meaning, we start with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We start with his book, we start with his messenger and then everybody else comes after that. We have to remember that so that we don't over focus in one area of our lives. It's not just our career, it's not just our education, it's not just our family. But we don't neglect our family at the, and, and, and focus on our careers. And we don't ne neglect our careers and focus just on um, other, other aspects of our life. We have to have this balance. One time, the companions of Isa السلام, asked him a question. He had mentioned, he said that the Root of all diseases of the heart is love of this world. They said, why? He said, because it leads to arrogance and showing off. So then they said, well, what if he has dunya and he doesn't have those aspects? He's not arrogant with his money and his wealth and everything he accumulates, he or she. He's not arrogant and he's not showing off. He said, then, shagaluhu islahuhu an dhikrillah. Taking care of that wealth will cause him to forget the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To forget the dhikr of Allah. So we have to remember our priorities. Yes, we have to support ourselves and our families and our communities. But how much of our careers and our projects are taking us away from the dhikr of Allah? We are here today showing our... responding to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show up for Jum'ah. Even in the midst of the pandemic, the Muslims wanted to get back to the masajid and alhamdulillah they're starting to open up little by little and hopefully soon we'll be able to get back into the masjid. But for this time being, what brought each and every one of you here was responding to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says when the call is made for Jum'ah, then go fast. Travel to the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remember him. And that's what you're doing. Even in your silence, even in your sitting, you're doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because by fulfilling the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is a form of dhikr. Umar radiallahu anhu said that the greatest form of dhikr is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at his commands and at his prohibitions. Every time you think to yourself, that's haram, I can't do it. That's fard, I have to do it. That is a form of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah tells us to come to this dhikr. Then what happens? When the salah is over, when the prayer is over, then go out in the world and seek the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of. Yes, we start with dhikr, but we also have to live our lives. So then we go out and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq and the success to be able to bring that balance into our lives and that when we go out in the dunya, when we go out into our careers, our educations, our family, our communities, our projects, our self, uh, our own personal uh, interests and hobbies, that we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we bring, bring the dhikr of Allah, and we bring the nasiha to his book and to his messenger into our lives and into our works. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the tawfiq, for that, for the success. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring ease to the pain and suffering that so many Muslims and so many human beings around the world are experiencing. Ya Allah, hanzil alayna rahmatak. Oh Allah, send down upon us your mercy. Your mercy in its many forms and your mercy in the form of rain. Ya Allah, oh Allah, forgive those, uh, forgive all of us who have trans transgressed against your 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 hudud, your, your limits. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, bring shifa, bring healing to those of us who are sick. Ya Allah, bring mercy and rahmah to those of us uh, who have passed away. And Ya Allah, give us the tawfiq to fulfill whatever it is that you want for us to do in this dunya and make our place in the akhirah a beautiful place and bring us together with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'll call the qawli hada wa astaghfirullah wa alihi wa lakum wa nisa'ilu muslimin wa aqim as-salam.